And we are live. About a week ago, I got a message from a woman who said that her 15-year-old son was a big fan of my videos. He was going through a hard time at school because he's smaller than a lot of the other kids his age. And he's being bullied by some fat fuck and his friends that don't even fucking lift. And she said, brother, can you please make a video regarding bullying? She told me that every morning at breakfast, he tells her that he's a friend at school. Now, I consider myself a pretty fucking tough guy, but that shit broke my fucking heart. Nobody, and I mean nobody, should be afraid to go anywhere, whether it's work, school, anywhere. It doesn't fucking matter. I don't care if you're 15 or 50. And I responded with the best possible advice I could give outside of picking up the biggest fucking rock and cracking this fucker across the face. I said, get him in the weight room at school as soon as possible. Get him into the membership. Let him start fucking shit up as soon as possible. Let me and lift up the little bro and the fucking glorious house of gains will take care of the rest. The bigger and stronger you get, the less this bully will give you shit. And as the months go by and you're starting to fill out the sleeves of your sweetie express shirt like a fucking champ, that bully is still going to be that little fat fuck that wears a t-shirt in the swimming pool. Now I challenge everyone out there watching this video to help a brother or sister in need if they're having a hard time. If you see someone getting picked on, speak the fuck up. We are all brothers and sisters in this game. And if you're just going to sit on the sidelines and condone this kind of behavior, Uncle Robert Frank is going to have to get involved. And on this motherfucker's 18th birthday, I'm going to be on his doorstep, knocking on the door. Oh, that motherfucker has this. All right. Uh, that leads me into today's guest on the BBL show. Make I sure welcome. you follow me on Instagram. Come in your oh, hands, man. Bad. Hold on. Have a chance of being featured. Oh, I'm Adrian, by the way. Oh, my bad. All right, so um, today's guest on the BBL show, none other than the man himself, Robert Frank, a.k.a. Robert Frank 615. What's up, Alan? What's up, man? How you doing? Doing great, man. Um, I wanted to start the show with that particular video because um, in the Barber Life community, we're all about positivity, um, you know, supporting one another, having each other's backs. And I felt like that was the perfect uh, way to introduce you to uh, our followers, especially because, um, you know, a lot of your videos are like that. You know, you're, you're telling people to step up and have each other's backs and things like that. And uh, I, that was just perfect intro. So welcome, man. Good having you on the show. Thank you. Thank you. That was a fun video to make. That was actually a... Um Probably the first request I got to make a video like that was probably back in October or November uh, from a woman who asked me if, uh, you know, her, her kid was getting bullied and if I could make a video. And then at least once or twice a week, I get the request. So I was like, this is something I had to do. And I found time to do it. And there it is. You got you got a good uh, response from that video, I'm guessing. Yeah. Yeah, no, it, it got, it got, I think it's around 6,000 shares on Facebook. It's got, um, you know, 100,000 views on Instagram and it's just, everything's been positive with it. There's no, there, there's been no comments of, you know, shit talking or negativity or anything like that. So it's good. Nice. Yeah. You put positivity out there, you get it back. So that's what's up, man. Um, so yeah, great to have you on the show. Um, on this occasion, I wore my extra medium shirt just for you. Yeah, buddy. Barbell life. Um, all right. So, uh, like we're talking about, I noticed in a lot of your videos, you actually, you find a, a clever way to sneak some, you know, positive messages in there. Um, I'm trying to think of one off the top of my head. Uh, what was it? The, uh, new year's resolution video, you know, uh, you're saying people were trying to get you to bash new year's resolutioners. And instead you took that opportunity to you know, tell people to support those guys and, uh, you know, not, instead of bashing them, actually support them and, and, and help them out. And uh, I think that's important because a lot of your videos, you come off as real, real tough and, and, and angry, but, you know, there's more to it than that. You're actually trying to put a good message out there as well. I respect that. Yeah, man, everybody's got to start somewhere. And it's it's funny. It's fun to, you know, troll the New Year's resolutioners, the, the ones who truly are New Year's resolutioners who come in for a month and then leave. But um, everybody started somewhere, you know what I mean? So if, if New Year's Day is when they're going to start, then that's it. Did I lose you?
Hey, my bad, dude. I something happened with my computer. I'm here. All right, so um, oh, okay. All right. You were saying? No, I was just saying that in uh, you know, it's it's always funny to make trolling videos with New Year's resolutions because those are the people that come for two weeks and leave. Uh, but everybody started somewhere, mm -hmm. and it's uh, if New Year's is when you said that. Fuck it, this is when I'm gonna start. Then so be it. You know what I mean. So that that's why we uh, that's why I made that video. I've made probably two or three videos making fun of New Year's resolutions in the past, but we're trying to change more to a more positive vibe with the channel and shit. So, um, and again, I, I know you guys probably a lot of your followers and fans are familiar with C3 Muscle from Instagram. He was a New Year's resolutioner, and now that motherfucker squats six seven hundred pounds for reps. So everybody starts somewhere. I like that, man. Yeah. Um, you know, we get we get some people in the community try to jump on and bash those guys. And it's like, like you said, everyone starts somewhere. You can't, you know, you you, you started never lifting away before. I started never lifting away before. And, and you know, if, if we didn't have support from others and we listened to that bullshit, we'd have never got anywhere. So um, I really appreciate that video in particular. Um, so let's just get, get started and start talking about yourself. Um, want to get a little background on Robert Frank. Um, right. talked about, you know, first getting started off. What is it that got you lifting and going into the gym? Um, well, I was tired of being 126 pounds. That's pretty much what it was. Uh, <laughs> and I, I didn't start in my mid twenties and, um, probably mid, mid to late twenties is when I started. I was skinny as hell. And, um, you know, I really don't know what kicked it off, but um, once I started, I never turned back. So it's been uh, been fun. Yeah, I, I can I can relate there, man. I most of my life I was real skinny, uh, you know, shorter shorter guy. I'm only five eight, but um, yeah, I think for me it was just you want to get jacked. You know, I grew up watching WWF and uh, He Man and all that shit. So my whole life I just had that image of being a big jack motherfucker. And as you get older, you know, you want to be able to knock a motherfucker out or get more bitches, you know, stuff like that. So that was kind of, uh, I think that's a lot of guys motivation right there. Uh, once you find that out, once, you know, the bigger you start getting, the more compliments you start getting from both males and females. And it's like, Oh shit, this is working. And then you just want to get bigger and mm -hmm. it just, it, it becomes part of your, part of your life. And so it's, you know, never turn back. Nice. nice. <laughs> well, you, you definitely came a long way from 120. What are you at right now? Uh, right now I just weighed myself yesterday. I'm like 209. Um, but I've been as heavy as 225 and over the past couple of years when I diet as low as like 200, 201, 199, something like that. So I fluctuate anywhere between 20 and 25 pounds a year, depending on what time of the year it is and where I'm going. I don't compete. You know, that. I'm sure you guys know that I don't compete, but, um, if I'm going on vacation or something like that, I'll, I'll get myself in shape. Get some good, uh, beach pictures put out there. Um, you got a goal as far as how big you want to get? Because uh, you'd be you're satisfied. So, are you talking how big I want to get? Are you saying? Yeah, because you know we get we get a certain amount of muscle or we get a certain size, and it's like, okay, we reached that point. Now we want to get bigger. We want to. You always want to push it. You got a, a goal in mind? Um, no, I, I I think that I so far. I mean, uh, over the past. 15 years or so that I've been doing this. Um, I think I look best somewhere in that 210 to 215 range. When I was up to 225, couldn't see any abs, couldn't, you know, there was really no definition at all. And I think the bigger I get, um, it just, the, the shittier I'll look. So. So you're good where you're at right now, huh? Yeah, I'm, I'm good right now. I'm happy. Um, all right. So when you, uh, when you start first started, lifting well, let me go back real, real quick um when you were growing up you said you were a smaller guy did you ever have to deal with these bullies and stuff um no not really because i was one of the younger i was one of the younger kids in an apartment complex and we would all play together and the uh the bigger kids always had my back so bullying was never a problem 
uh, with me. Thank God. I, you know. So, yeah, there you go. There Shit. you go, man. There's the before and after. That was the. I, I can't see. I, I can only see half of the picture, but I could see the picture when I was with the with the backwards baseball hat. That's funny. That's that's Bobby Frank right there. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> All right. So, um, let's see. Let's see. Um, we'll jump into what you you had this YouTube channel for a while now. Um, where did that all start? What made you want to make a YouTube channel and start putting videos out there? Well, I made a YouTube channel, um, but I didn't start posting videos regularly right away. I, I kind of held off for a couple months, and then I would just throw up my old Instagram skits just to see how they would do because everyone – talked about YouTube money. I kept hearing all these people making money, making videos. And eventually that's what I wanted to do. And um, I think I opened up the channel in 2012 or 13, but I didn't start posting regularly um, and making specific for YouTube videos until I think to March or April of 2014. Okay. So you were on Instagram first, huh? Yeah, I started on Instagram making just stupid little gym skits and then the CrossFit trolling and Planet Fitness trolling and shit. And then um, uh, and then it just went to – I started making longer uh, YouTube videos, um, like little skits and stuff like that. We had a lot of stuff with, with uh, Marissa, MBJ. I'm sure everybody knows her um, if they follow my channel. So, yeah, it's, it's fun. I, I like ma I like making YouTube videos better than I like making Instagram videos because I could actually make longer videos and not have to speed them up ten times just to fit. Yeah, I feel you. Um, do you remember what your first your first video was that you put out there? The first video, the first four YouTube video that I made was I think how to get a guy's attention at the gym, right, Marissa? Yeah. Um, that was the first one that was strictly for YouTube. Um, but then we made, I think it was like. Uh-oh. We lost him. Yeah. There he is. Sorry about that. All right. Now we're, now we're even, dude. Now we're what? Now we're even. I disappeared oh. for a second. <laughs> now you. Yeah, give me. Can you see me? Because I can't see you right now. No, I can see you. Um, okay. it's, it's one of the issues is that this, uh, this platform, oh, okay. right. sometimes. Well, as, long as, as long as I'm not supposed to be able to see you, we're good. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to see me anyway, man. Um, so, uh, how do you, where do you come up with your ideas for these videos? Driving, driving and in the shower. That's, that's so that's funny, man. That's so yeah. funny. Uh, yeah. A lot of my ideas are in the shower too. Uh, they say it's, the it's like thing about the shower is unbelievable, man. <laughs> yeah. Well, there's science behind it. It's you're, you're in a state of, uh, meditation because there's no outside distractions. It's just, you know, you're alone or whatever with your thoughts. But, um, right. Do, so you don't sit down and have a pen and paper and start trying to think of ideas or what? No, I mean, once I, usually what I do is once I get an idea from driving or whatever, if I'm in the shower, as soon as I get out, I'll jot it in my notepad on my iPhone. Um, and then it's very rarely where I take out a pen and piece of paper and actually write a script. It's been a while since I've done that, actually. <clears throat> now, uh, before you got the recognition that you have now, um, what was it like trying to get your videos out there? And, um, you know, before you had a lot of popularity, a lot of likes, a lot of comments, things like that. Like, did you get frustrated? Um, were you sitting there waiting till you finally got that one video that took off? Like, tell me about that. Um, yeah, I mean, the, the main thing that I always wanted to, uh, I had to remember was consistency. Um, the three things that I always said, which would get my videos recognized one day. I didn't know what day, but one day I knew they would get recognized. Um, it was consistency, comedy, controversy, and TNA. So those were the things that I tried to incorporate into all my videos in the beginning, just to, you know, get the name out there. And they're still pretty much like that now, minus the TNA, because my girlfriend has a, a real job now, so we can't be having a Miss Booty Jiggles 
Bubble Butt Series <laughs> Volume Ten. But, um, so yeah, no, that's definitely definitely in the beginning it was frustrating, um, but what I learned and the reason why I started doing a lot of the CrossFit videos was because when I had three hundred followers, I'd post a CrossFit meme or a cross, CrossFit video and it would get six hundred likes. So I was like, oh, I might be onto something here. So that's pretty. I mean, shit, you see it in, in the media, you know, controversy sells. So, I mean, that makes sense. Um, yeah. All right. So. And I never wanted to be, I never wanted to be one of the, the YouTube channels that did product reviews or workout videos or tips or anything like that. I wanted to keep it fitness related, but comedy based and just entertaining. Now, do you have a background in any, like, did you grow up, you know, telling jokes, being funny? Uh, class clown, anything like that? Um, no, not really. Uh, maybe class clown when I was younger, but no, never really. Uh, no, no. So this is just one of those things that just kind of <laughs> happened, and you ran with it, huh? Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm quick witted, so I could always come up with pretty funny one liners and shit. And I guess that's just how it started. Okay. Okay. Um. So yeah, like I was saying, it, I'm sure you get frustrated with trying to trying to actually have that hit video. Did you have in your in your head that that's what was going to happen? That eventually something was going to catch and you were going to take off? Um, I like I said, I knew as long as I I kept coming up with new original content that eventually something was was going to uh, was going to strike and. Um, the first video I think that I ever had that hit a million views didn't come until I think like 2000 and uh, 2016. So it took like three years of constantly coming up with content, making videos to actually get my first video to hit um, 1 million views. But since then we've been, we've been killing it since then. It only takes one video. So anybody out there who's making videos and, and shit like that, just keep going, man. It's going to come. Well, that's what they say. You go viral. Um, now, what video was that, that that really put you over the top? Um, the first one was the um, late for CrossFit video where I walked into, I uh, pretended to walk into a CrossFit gym and those guys that were like slamming the barbells and jumping around and I incorporated my own skits into that. Um, it was a little 15 second Instagram video and it ended up getting shared all over facebook and instagram and um i forget what big page share i think it was bro science shared it um no, and they uh they shared quite a few of my videos but that was the first one that hit a million views okay now you're talking about it took three years to actually get to that point though um do you ever hope that you know the people who follow you now will look back at some of the videos that you felt were gold that didn't really get the recognition that they deserve um, yeah, I, I'd like to hope so, but sometimes I even go back to like 2014 and, and shit and I cringe. I'm like, oh, that shit. Was <laughs> but, um, no, and like I, I, I was saying just the other day to somebody, the rage videos that I make sitting in the car screaming at the phone, those are the ones that do the best, but actually the ones that I like making the most are, are the skit videos. So mm -hmm. I, I wish people would go back and watch them a little bit more, but no, don't go too far back. Just go back maybe, you know. Six months or so, because those are pretty good ones. But uh, yeah. I like the throwback Thursdays, uh, some of my favorite ones um, on Instagrams from time to time, and they do well. Now, do you have a all-time personal favorite video that you've made? Probably the um, bench pressing with CrossFit plates, where I where I fling the uh, the barbell with yeah. the, the off the off the bench. That's probably my favorite video. And I almost Jay in the process because she was filming that and one of the, the bumper plates just went flying in her direction. Oh, yeah. Uh, it, it wouldn't have hurt her. Those things are so soft. Yeah, they're made of feathers. So. <laughs> it's like a stuffed pillow. Um, all right. So now I think the one, the video, your biggest video, was that the uh, Pikachu go fuck yourself? Yeah, yeah. Pokemon Go Fuck Yourself. I that's think right, that's right. I haven't looked in a while, but I the last I checked, and this was back in July when it came out, it was uh, over 35 million views. So that was pretty cool. Okay, so that was the video that pretty much 
really put you on the map, though, as far as the big exposure and popularity yeah. and all that. Yeah, that's the one. I was stuck. I mean, my YouTube channel was growing, you know, 20 subscribers a day. My Instagram was stuck at like 15,000 um, for months. And um, and then that video really, really sparked, sparked it. And that was not scripted. That was a, a God's honest. I was angry as hell, ran out to my car and made that video mid-workout. Um, and yeah. It's the the dumbest shit, man. The dumbest shit. Well, like like we were talking about um, earlier, you know, you capitalize on what's what's popular, or what's uh, in the media at the moment. You know, that's genius. Yeah. Um, you ended up actually making a part two to that. Now, what sparked that? Um, well, what happened was is that video. The reason why, part of the reason why it did so well is it ended up getting shared on a pokemon go forum that had hundreds of thousands of, of followers on it so every 30 seconds i was getting a private message of people telling me to go kill myself mm -hmm. fuck you pokemon go rules go hang yourself like it was just it was the funniest shit in the world um so i took the opportunity to make a response video and you know you go to these people's profiles and you know they're 90 pounds soaking wet they look like fucking harry potter and shit <laughs> they, look like, like, they look like pokemon huh they look like yeah they look like pokemon <laughs> all right so um from there you know like you said you start you got 20 30 million uh views um now what was it like going from you know trying to build a channel and having a little bit of recognition to pretty much overnight being a big hit and you know getting tagged and getting your video shared and people hitting you up and you know having that following so quick out of nowhere um it, i mean it was it was crazy it was definitely overwhelming and it, it gets distracting um at the same time um not that it's a bad thing but when you're trying to go about your normal day and your phone is i mean i turned off notifications on everything um is that bad, huh? Yeah, real quick. Babe, could you text Joey and see what he wants? Yeah. Sorry about that. Oh, uh, you're good. I, yeah, I'm, I might be saying something I'm not supposed to because I know my manager is listening in. So um, he's probably wants to yell at me for something. But no, um, yeah, no, I turn notifications off on everything, Instagram, Facebook. Uh, I don't get notifications for anything. And Bill, between all the private messages that we get, um, it's just, it's crazy. I don't know how people like The Rock and uh, all these big, big, big name people do it. Um, they, think, they've got somebody that goes through all their shit. I was going to say, I think they got like a team of personal assistants that just answers all their stuff and notifications and all that. You'd like to think a guy, you'd like to think a guy like The Rock um, wouldn't do that just because he seems like such a genuine guy, but you know damn well that he's got like 50 people that he pays $15 an hour to uh, look at his video, to look at his uh, message. Oh, yeah. There's not enough hours in the day, especially when you're doing all that shit. Um, yeah. Let's see. So since since all that happened, how has your life changed as far as, uh, like, is there any changes you notice since you've become a hit? Um, Not real. I mean, I mean, I, I've, I've always gotten recognized when I go out, but now it's like more so than ever. Um, I could go to the mall and at least one person will come up to me and say, Hey, are you Robert Frank at the gym? People that I've seen that I've known, not known, but have seen at the gym for years, like will come up to me out of nowhere and be like, Hey, are you, are you the guy that makes those videos in the car? And I'm like, yeah, that's me. And um, yeah, <laughs> just like that. But a lot of opportunities have come up. Um, also, which is, you know, very good, I guess, coming out of all this. Um, there's a lot of things that I can't say right now, but there's a big announcement that on Monday night I'll be making, which is really exciting. And that's probably the biggest thing that that's happened to me, um, since all the shit blew up. So okay. Monday night, check it out. Rob Monday, Monday night. Five. Hopefully Monday night. Okay, cool, cool. Um, now, uh, now you have all these followers and all these fans. Um, 
what is it like? Do you have people just constantly messaging you and like you said, coming up to you and have you had to deal with any like, uh, and you have any crazy stories when it, when it comes to these fans? Um, no, not really. And, and surprisingly, uh, from all the CrossFit trolling that I've done over the past three years, um, CrossFitters, people that do CrossFit will come up to me and say, Hey, I do CrossFit. Don't punch me in the face. I think you're fucking hilarious. So yeah. even their community has been like, you know, just on board with the whole thing. They know it's all for jokes and shit like that. So, um, pretty much that's that's it no real crazy stories that i could think of are there any crazy stories that you could think of oh crazy he's asking has there been any crazy stories since my videos have have gone viral and shit like any With stalkers people? or anyone trying to fight you or anything crazy like that no 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 she gets she gets more creepy dms than i do all my dms uh, honestly they're 99 percent just Hey, love your videos, love this, love that. Or they're asking for like diet tips or advice or, um, you know, the, the ones that, that come in that are truly negative, they're the ones that you could tell that they want me to crop the, the screenshot it and post it just so they get attention. So we don't do that. Yeah. They're trying to capitalize off of your name. That makes sense. Um, now you're talking about how you troll crossfitters and stuff like that. Um, with with the notoriety and the popularity that's when the trolls start coming out so i'm mm -hmm. sure you've had your share um can you tell me a little bit about that uh yeah i mean not recent not not lately um i know eventually it's gonna come the bigger you get the more people are, are gonna hate on you and, and uh, even if it's not hating just trolling you just at a good fun um but I, I, I did have a little bit of a rivalry with a, a, a CrossFit group um, probably about a year or so ago. And we were going back and forth and they would make memes about me. You know, Robert Frank skips leg day and uh, Robert Frank hates CrossFit. Can't stop talking about it. The guy actually uh, um, uh, messaged me and he was like, hey, let me send you a shirt. And he sent me a CrossFit shirt and it was like an extra small um so you know just control me perfect but, you know. i mean that's the size that i wear anyway <laughs> it's mediums yeah yeah so nothing yeah. nothing too uh too crazy though right <clears throat> mean spirited no, no, nothing, nothing like that nothing yet but i i like i like <clears throat> that for as much people that come up to me and tell me that they love my videos i i, I like people that that talk shit and troll too because that's it's and it's all entertaining yeah yeah, I mean, we we've had to deal with our share too. I mean, <clears throat> you'll see there's a there's entire groups that actually their whole purpose is to troll one person or one community or whatever. So you know, yeah. have fun with that. But uh, right. <laughs> um, hate to put you on the spot, but um, you know these are the type of questions uh, people want to know. I'm sure. Um, I know your ladies there, but. Since you've blown up, have uh, have you been getting any uh, Robert Frank groupies as far as females throwing themselves at you or trying to hit you up on the low, things like that? Oh, uh, I mean, every day, man. I, I actually uh, – I, I banged this chick the other night. Um, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> um, no, not, not really, to be honest with you. Um, we get messages from, from everybody, but – um, nothing, nothing like that. And if it is, it's like once in a blue moon, it's nothing. I mean, I'm not even a good looking guy. You know what I mean? I, I look like a mama Luke and I'm not like a Brad Pitt or the rock where people just throw themselves at me. I'm just the, you know, whatever, but no, a wink, wink. No, get any message. Yeah. 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 Well, we'll talk offline. Um, yeah. Cause with, with, with popularity comes groupies. It's, it's, I mean, you don't even got to be a good looking guy. I mean, females they see you doing big things and that just all of a sudden makes you that much more attractive so um yeah good luck with that too um <laughs> all right so MJ can kick some ass man i'm not I'm, I'm not worried all right hopefully i didn't get you in trouble but no um, we're good <laughs> now uh you were talking about some big things coming up or whatever um yep. 
you had mentioned Tosh.0. Oh. You doing yep. something with that? Or you did something with that? Um, what happened was I was at the gym, uh, I guess it was the end of November, and I my phone started blowing up. And it was like private message after private message, like, hey, you're on Tosh, you're on Tosh. And I'm like, well, I am. So I went, um, I went on to, uh, uh, you know, Comedy Central and I saw myself and I was like, oh, shit. I was like, they didn't even ask me if they could use my video or anything. But that's cool. I'm on there. That's why they didn't mention my name or anything. But come to find out. Um, when I was going through private messages from months ago, because literally, like, I'm not even lying when I tell you that I get at least 500 a day. Um, I believe I back and I found it like I could always read the top line of a message. And the one message came in and was like, hey, Robert Frank, you need to. And anytime that someone says that I need to do something, I'll just scroll past it. Don't tell me what the fuck I need to do. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But the message, the whole message when I opened it up was Robert Frank, you need to be on television. Hi, this is whatever her name was from Comedy Central. She's the director of Tosh.0. Oh. They wanted to have me on the show, but... Um, you saw I need to, and it I kept scrolling. I, huh? I, got, I got that message about a, a month and a half late. So, But they used my video anyway, which was cool. And actually, I, I was just... Uh, I saw that yesterday on their Snapchat. Uh, they had my... They played that video on their Snapchat story. So a lot of people were blowing me up let me know that I was on there too. That was cool. Nice. Nice. Yeah. The more the merrier, man. But, um, all right. So, uh, moving forward, I know you said you got a big, uh, announcement. We won't get into that, but, um, what other, uh, what other things you got going on as far as, uh, with the, uh, you know, the, the brand and everything. Well, I mean, the biggest thing now is is we got the uh, the T-shirt store up and running. Um, so that's doing extremely well, a lot better than expected, to be honest with you. Um, so good, in fact, that we had to do like three different pre-sales because by the time that I was getting the orders in, they were already sold out. So um, the support has been phenomenal, like mind-blowing. Um, but other than that, right now, we have a couple little projects here and there. Uh, that we do on the side. Um, there's another big thing that I really can't get into, um, not just yet, um, and that's not going to be announced Monday. It's going to be probably another month or two down the road. But big things, a lot of offers coming in. Um, I signed a deal with Ridiculousness on MTV um, that they could use my stuff whenever they want. They wanted me as a guest in studio, um, but again, I got that late. Um, <laughs> so. Just a lot, a lot of, a lot of good things, a lot of positive things that have come from this. Okay. Yeah, it sounds like you need to hire a personal assistant, man. Yeah. No, I, I got one. Joey Bag of Donuts. He's, he's been unbelievable, and I've got support from uh, MBJ and and my dad, uh, Bob Colts. Like we put together, and and uh, my other buddy Vegas, we we put together a nice little team that keeps me grounded and um, takes a lot of pressure off of me. So it's been cool. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. Um, all right. So when you're not a raven lunatic sitting in your car, uh, you know, what's what's Robert doing uh, outside the gym? Um, well, I mean, shit. My, I'm, I'm, I go to work. And then after work, I go to the gym. So there's really no downtime for me. Um, so pretty much I'm Robert Frank for – half the day and the other half the day I'm sitting at a desk and I'm working. What do you do for a living? Um, I you... sell insurance. Okay. Okay. <laughs> um, what do you do for fun? I mean, besides work and, and videos and lift, obviously. Yeah. I was going to say lifting is, is my fun. Um, <laughs> I really don't. I really don't have any hobbies other than that because my day is so jam packed that it, as it is, I only get about four or five hours of sleep. So there's no real um, fun that I have. The only real hobby that uh, that I have is the Walking Dead. I mean, I make sure no matter what's going on, I watch Walking Dead. That's my hobby right now. But nothing else cool. No, uh, no other hobbies. I hope they get you on that show. Have a fucking jacked ass zombie chasing. Oh god, that would be, <laughs> that would be amazing. Uh, now, 
the image that you portray out there is very, uh, you know, intense and, and uh, I don't want to say mean, but just really tough and, and, and angry at times. But, you know, I've, I've seen some of your other interviews and, you know, just talking to you now this hour, you seem like a real down to earth, chill, mellow guy. Um, I'm guessing the Robert Frank 615 and Robert Frank are totally two different uh, entities, right? Uh, yeah, I would say that. And I think it was discovered uh, a couple weeks ago that the, the Robert Frank 615 raging guy is just a, a, is, is me with, you know, is me on testosterone. Um, it's, uh, you know, it's that guy definitely is, is, uh, is one of a kind. And he, um, I, I don't, I don't know. It's, it, they're both me, but, but that, that one is just, that, that's me on three scoops of pre-workout and, um, <laughs> you know, just ready to, ready to fuck some shit up in the gym. Okay. Well, it's working. Man. Shit. Um, I was going to talk about, you know, business ventures and things like that, but we've always already covered that for the most part. Um, I'm guessing the, the master plan though is to eventually, you know, do this full time and, uh, you know, make that the whole Robert Frank, uh, enterprise branding, right? Yeah. I mean, um, that, that would be the dream. I mean, who wouldn't want to just fucking make videos for a living and, um, uh, just, that's a lot of fun. Um, that, yeah, that, that would be the dream. But like I said, right now with, with YouTube doing, um, really well and growing every day and, and the t-shirt store and, um, just the little side projects that I get here and there to, uh, to do things. Um, the, also I, I have the relationship with steel supplements, uh, Jason, Ha um, reached out to me a few months ago and, and we put a little something together where, um, that's doing a lot better than I expected it to. So things are, that is the plan. That's the ultimate goal. Um, I hope nobody from my job is listening right now, <laughs> but if you are, um, but no, yeah, that's, that, that would be, that would be the dream. Yeah. Nice. Nice. Okay. Um, speaking of the shirts, let's go ahead and, uh, get like a plug in for that. How, how does someone go about getting your shirts? They would go to robertfrank615.com. I keep it very simple. Everything, all my social medias and everything, and even the store is robertfrank615.com. Um, and you just, it's, it's very simple. It's a Shopify hosted store. So it's it, it, very user friendly. Um, and we have right now, we have, I think, five different designs up on the store. Um, swole is the goal, size is the prize, International Chess Day. It's Gains O'Clock, Trembolone Sandwich, and um, and just my logo, uh, my Instagram logo and Facebook logo T-shirt. Okay, cool, cool. Go check that out. And, uh, and, and I must say, all shirts, no matter if it's small or double XL, come with medium sleeves. So guns <laughs> will be hugging. Always, always. All right. So, um, you got any other plugs you want to get out there? Um, if anybody's interested, um, is it cool if I give like a supplement plug for steel subs? Go ahead, man. Do your thing. Okay. Um, anybody who's interested in uh, pre-workout, post-workout, intra-workout, uh, protein, anything like that, steelsup615.com. Um, and make sure you use the discount code RF10. Uh, Jason made it very clear to me that he's not someone that just blasts out discounts. And usually it's it's only Black Friday and Cyber Monday that he gives out a discount code. So mine is valid all the time. Use RF10. Save some fucking money. Um, yeah, and that's it. And my YouTube and, and the T-shirt store, that's really all I got going on right now. And everything is Robert Frank 615 right? Yeah, Instagram, Facebook, uh, Twitter, which I really don't use. I just logged on to Snapchat today to – try to see if I can get that going. I never really got into that, but I have that going on now. Um, mainly I'm Instagram and, and Facebook, Facebook fan page and, uh, and the regular Facebook. So no more fuck Twitter or what? Uh, Twitter just sucks, man. It's like, <laughs> understand how it, how it works. Like, um, 
like, yeah, I could post like a, a saying or, or post something, but then when people reply to me, I don't know how to reply back to them. Is everybody seeing it? Or are they just seeing it? Like, I don't fucking know how it works. Fuck Twitter. I'm deleting it as soon as we're done. Dave, remind me when I'm done here, I'm deleting Twitter. Fuck Twitter. Nice. Fuck Twitter. All right. Cool. Um, all right. So we'll end the, we'll end the show with uh, just kind of like a something for the fans. We'll kind of go over some, okay. some quick topics. You can uh, say a few words on them. Uh however big or small, but um, we'll go ahead and blast through these real quick. Um, give me your thoughts on uh, Planet Fitness. Um, Planet Fitness sucks. Um, <laughs> I, I, I don't want to, you know what, I don't want to say it sucks because there are some people out there, and I'm, I'm learning this, that Planet Fitness is the only gym in their area within like 15 or 20 miles of where they live. So where else yeah. are you going to work? You know what I mean? But it's it's definitely not a gym for for people like us mm -hmm. um, or people that are part of the barbell life community. It's it's more for beginners and um, and people that really don't have a choice. But one to ten, I give them a, a one. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, that's one thing we kind of we don't really let a lot of people bash Planet Fitness either because, like you said, I mean some people that's their only gym. Um, it's affordable, things like that. But. Um, I've had to work work out there a couple of times when I'm traveling and stuff like that. And I mean, the price is good, but you know, you can't deadlift, you can't you can't really do any heavy weights, you can't really exert yourself if you're if you're breathing too loud. They fucking hit you with the lunk alarm, which uh, me and my buddy got hit with the lunk alarm. I saw your video, check that out, yeah. lunk alarm video. Yeah. Uh, you were basically trying to get kicked out, and at first it wasn't working, right? Yeah, we were doing everything in our power to get kicked out, and they said it was really late at night, and I I think the kid behind the desk just really didn't give a fuck. Um, but then <laughs> we just got, we just got totally rowdy. Um, but yeah, no, like you said, Planet Fitness for some people, if that's your only option, then you got to do it. Knock it out, yeah, make it work, right? Yep. All right. 100%. All right. Next topic: uh, CrossFit. Totally ridiculous. Why even ask that question? Kipping pull-ups, wall ball, burpees. Come on, man. Get the fuck out of here. Don't forget short shorts. Um, all right. Next topic. Fair enough. Uh, dad bod. The dad bod. Um, anyone with a dad bod should be uh, – and this is Robert Frank 615 talking. Anyone with a dad bod should be fucking embarrassed of themselves. Get yourself in the gym, make some gains, and it doesn't matter if you're in your 40s or 50s. Don't walk around. Uh, you know, if, if your stomach is hanging over uh, your belt, and, and uh, you know, take care of that. Yeah, no, no bitch tits. All right. Yeah. <laughs> um, leg day. What's that? <laughs> Fair enough. Okay. Uh, Jim Bros. Um, Jim Bros. Uh, define Jim Bros. That's my question to you, sir. Oh, okay. Um, if you're, uh, I, I have no problem with Jim Bros. I mean, my definition of a Jim Bro is 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 a bro who uh, you know goes to the gym and and um, you know probably skips leg day, uh, trains chest <laughs> a little too much. Um, <laughs> Uh, arms Friday and Saturday night and a little catch up on Sunday. Um, but no, I, I have no problem with Jim Bros. What I do have a problem with though is, is the guys that come in and, and I guess that plug worked because I'm getting blown up with my t-shirt store right now. Orders coming in. So thank you everybody. If you're watching this live, um, the, um, uh, like I, I have a problem with like the guys that walk in with the fucking water jug and, and the, the fucking huge ass gym bag that's got everything in the fucking world in it. Like, I walk in the gym with my little colon spring, sixteen point nine ounce bottle, and I fucking go to work. But all right, yeah. all right. Um, you mentioned intern. You, you mentioned chess day. So tell me about international chess day. What are your thoughts? International chess day is the greatest day of the week. It starts Monday and it ends Thursday. Um, chess four days in a row. 
And uh, as long as you're not doing the same exercises, uh, then you're you're good to go. People think that's overtraining, but I call bullshit. Okay. Well, speaks for itself. I, I see you bulging out that that top. Um, trim bologna sandwiches. Love them. Love them. Del okay. <laughs> Delicious. <laughs> All right. Um, gains a clock. Uh, it's always gains a clock. Every hour of the day is, is there's no bad time to make gains. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Um, medium t-shirts. It's the only way. It's the only size I wear. It's the only size I own. If your guns ain't fucking busting out of the seams of your shirt, then, you know, what, what are you doing with your life? What's the point, right? All right. Well, <laughs> if there's space... If there's space in between your shirt and 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 the the sleeve, your arm and the sleeve of the shirt, if there's space, you're not training hard enough. You are wrong. Correct. All right. So, <laughs> uh, taking the the one thirties for a ride on the incline. Uh, what about it? Just how how fun it is, or that's all you had to say, sir. Okay. Uh, yeah. No, it's. Gotta love the one thirty. Not a lot of gyms go up to one thirties, though. You you'll be surprised around here in New Jersey. Um, it, it's hard to find a gym that goes over one twenty, but you, you'll find them. Yeah, our gym actually just got over one hundred. I was I was pleasantly surprised. Um, cool, cool. All right, so Jack Tan and juicy as fuck. It's the only way only way to live, man. Is fucking you got to be jacked. If you're not fucking. If you're not jacked and tan, you're frail and pale, man. And nobody, and I mean nobody, should be frail and pale. Now, what if you're jacked and juicy but not tan? How's that work? Um, I mean, it's, it's, you could always get you, you could you could always find a tanning salon somewhere. Okay, so pretty much throw that in the in the repertoire. Make that shit happen. Yeah, make it happen. They all go. They all, they all go hand in hand. Nice. All right. What was that last? I said they all go hand in hand. You can't have one without the other. Yeah. All right. Um, the glorious House of Gains. Best place in the world, man. Iron Sanctuary. It's the place where um, you could forget about whatever stress you have in life, whatever uh, whatever's going on in the outside world. Just get shut off when you're there, man. It's fucking. Uh, people think that I joke when I say that, but that really is, and I'm sure for you as well. That is a place of, that's that's my church. You know what I mean? That's that's the place where I'm the most focused. I I have the most fun. Um, it's that's the place, man. The glorious house of gains. Yeah, definitely. Um, on a serious note, like the gym is really a savior. Um, you know, some of the hardest times of my life have been uh, resolved through. Just the gym and burning off stress or you know anxiety or you know even you know feeling down or going through you know hard life shit and going to the gym just even if it's just a little bit make make shit better so um i definitely feel you there man yeah there, there's nothing that there's no better feeling in the world than when i mean i know arnold said it in pumping iron but really there's no better feeling in the world when you got a fucking pump man like you're you feel invincible. All all the stress of the day goes away when you're fucking, uh, you know, when you got blood in the muscle, man. Definitely, definitely. All right, so uh, I'll, I'll I'll end with this last one. Uh, Pokemon Go. Pokemon Go. Pokemon Go. Fuck yourself. <laughs> Thank you, sir. And on that note, um, it's been a pleasure having you on the show. Um, great guest. Um. Hopefully we can get you back on, uh, do some things in the future, man. Uh, you got anything you want to say before we wrap it up? Um, just basically for everybody out there who has enjoyed my tomfoolery over the past three year, you know, ch three and change years. Um, whether you just subscribed today or you've been around for you know three years, just thank you. Like the the support has been unbelievable, and um, you know. Uh, I, I can't just thank you. Thank you. Definitely, man. Um, now, every time we have a guest on the show, we like to end with, um, we like to ask 
what what is a bit of advice you would give anybody out there? It can be any kind of advice whatsoever, but what would you give somebody watching this right now? Um, just being that uh, what I do, making videos and, and stuff like that, like being a, an online personality, is anybody out there, like just stay consistent. Consistency is key. It doesn't matter if what you're putting out there is getting one view or one like or whatever. Keep grinding, man, because one day it, it's going to happen. Nice. All right. Well, you heard it here. Robert Frank, The Barbell Life. Appreciate you being on the show, brother. And uh, until next time, man. All right, man. Thank you for having me. Definitely. Take it easy. Later, bro. All right, and uh, on that note, we'll wrap up with uh, a quick plug from our sponsor, Barbell Nutrition. Uh, we have Thermite is pretty much wrapping up the pre-sales. It's a all-natural fat burner, thermogenic pre-workout pill. Um, so go to barbellnutrition.com, place your order. Um, if you're not on the BBL newsletter, Go ahead and do that there as well. Um, we're about to start shipping out the end of the month. And uh, we've got a couple other products in store. So stay tuned. And uh, appreciate everybody coming out. And uh, till next time, guys, take it easy. We're out.